Hello everyone and welcome to the finals of the 2020 Chessable Masters. Uh, it's the quarterfinals and uh, the first match is Fabiano Corwana versus Magnus Carlsen. Uh, also the other one is uh, Yanni Pomniche versus Vladislav Artemiev. Uh, and uh, like we mentioned in the previous video, the two groups have now merged together and now it's no longer prelim preliminaries, it's now the, the knockouts. And uh, like, the, like the previous tournament in the Magnus uh, uh, Chess Tour, we will have uh, each match will be basically a set of three matches. So this is only the first match the, the, of uh, four games. Games. Uh, if it's a, if it's a tie, then of course they go into into Armageddon until uh, one emerges victorious. Then the second match, then the third match. It's the same like we've like we've already covered. So without further ado, let's check it out. This is the second game uh, of their first match, and Fabi has the white pieces. He lost uh, the first game to Magnus, where Magnus had the white piece. So Fabi needs a win uh, to get back into the match. We have e4 by Fabi. Uh, and we have e5 by Magnus. Knight to f3, knight to c6. Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, bishop to c4. So uh, bishop to c4, Magnus goes for bishop to c5, the, piano, the Joko piano game is on the board, uh, and here Fabi does not go for the Evans gambit, unfortunately he goes for c3, continues in the main line of the Joko piano. So knight f6, uh, we have d3 uh, and d6, so uh, just uh, the standard main line, we have a4, and uh, now preparing b4 and, uh, uh, b4 and a5 to trap uh, the dark square bishop, so of course Magnus makes some room for the bishop, and castles. Uh, Magnus goes h6, doesn't allow any bishop g5, and rook to e1. Uh, we have uh, castles by, by black, uh, and now comes h3, also not allowing any uh, bishop or knight to g4 ideas. We have bishop to e6, and now bishop to b5, just uh, attacking the knight, which is one of the pieces that fights for the control of the center. So here, knight to a7, this is the standard move here, and d4 now. We have e captures, c captures, and now uh, there is one game in the database where the bishop just uh, just moves to b4, puts pressure on the rook, but here Magnus prepared a uh, knight captures on b5, and it is as of move uh, 13 that we have a completely new game. So now uh, he leaves Fabi the option of capturing here or capturing the bishop here, and uh, uh, if you go for the knight, then bishop to b4 come, uh, is again played, goes after the rook, and pretty much... Uh, pretty much runs into the same line uh, without uh, uh, the knight uh, on a7 and the bishop on b5. So here Fabi goes for uh, d captures on c5, he gets rid of the bishop, now there will be no bishop to b4 going after the rook, and now Magnus just goes back, knight to a7. We have captures on d6, queen captures on d6, and here Fabi trades. We have captures and captures. And Magnus says, I'm very happy here. Uh, I won the first game with the white pieces, now I have a fairly comfortable position with black. I do have three pawn islands, uh, Whereas white has two, but I will try to keep this guy uh, somehow, uh, well, not, not a weakness. At some point I'm going to push it to d5 and uh, hopefully it will be okay. So knight to c3, Fabi continues development, and knight back to c6. Uh, we have bishop to f4, now puts pressure on the pawn here. And while well, you could just defend the pawn, uh, instead uh, Magnus just pushes it. He doesn't want uh, want to have a, a weak d6 pawn. Uh, Fabi pushes e5, he says, I'm still hoping this pawn will be weak, so I don't want to trade it. And now, uh, now Magnus decides to give up a pawn uh, for, uh, for some initiative. So he goes knight to e4, he offers the pawn. Uh, and Fabi accepts it. We have knight captures on e4, d captures, and rook captures on e4. So what did Magnus gain for his pawn sacrifice? Well, he won uh, the control of the d file for the moment, which is uh, an important uh, file to control, since now the rook is no longer on, on e1, and you cannot go rook, rook a to d1, for example. So rook to c1 instead, Fabi puts his rook on the other open file, uh, which is the c file, and now rook to d3, a very active square for the rook. From there you can go after the, the b2 pawn, for example, and it's just a, well, it's just a very active square for the rook, you can double up on the d file, and so on. So Fabi immediately challenges the rook, he doesn't want to allow Magnus to just double up, uh, which he does, but of course now it's not for free, Fabi will eliminate one of the rooks with captures, captures and now uh, Carlsen will go after the b2 pawn and the problem is you don't have any good ways of stopping this for example if you try rook to c3 uh, Magnus can just trade and just go let's say bishop b3 and he will win his pawn back so that's not the issue so here we have a, a really a nice example of how activity is uh, is uh, really a nice uh, uh, well uh, a nice trade-off for for an extra pawn because you can always win it back if you want so here Fabi goes bishop to e3, he decides to, to give up the pawn uh, in a different way, we have rook to b3, and now knight to d4. 
uh, sorry, knight to d4 by Fabi. Now saying, if you capture, I'm going to capture with the bishop and guard my pawn here. Uh, so he goes for it. We have knight captures, bishop captures, and rook to b4 now. So he will not be winning the b pawn, but he will win back the a pawn. This is how Fabi decided to give it back. Bishop to c3, and now just rook captures on a4. So now uh, winning his pawn back. And uh, the thing is, even though the material on the board is equal, Magnus has a 2 to 1 advantage on the queen side. And if he can get those pawns pushing, uh, then sooner or later he will create a pass pawn on the queen side. So here we have g4 by Fabi. Uh, probably with ideas of king g2, maybe g3, then f4. That's not f4. Uh, f4, maybe f5, and, and so on. So b5, Magnus continues playing on the queen side, and Fabi goes king g2 with his counterplay on the king side. We have b4, uh, pushing the bishop back, bishop to d4, and now comes b3. Uh, j it will be a very strong pawn since the bishop defends it, and also the bishop here is also under attack. So bishop back to c3, and now rook to a2, preparing to go a4 and a3. That's why it's... Uh, it's uh, sometimes very important to, to realize that you have a 2 to 1 advantage uh, on one, one side of the board. So rook to d1 by uh, Fabi and now just a4. Uh, we have king to f3. Also possible is, uh, is f4. Fabi decides to go for king to f3 right away. Uh, so a3 by Magnus. And now uh, if you capture then you create a, a pass b pawn. So it doesn't really matter if you capture or not. Uh, Fabi decided to block. And now a captures on b2. And it doesn't matter what uh, Fabi recaptures with. Since uh, even if rook captures uh, Magnus of course will not trade rooks. You don't want to go into this uh, opposite colored bishop endgame. Uh, so uh, Fabi first captures with the bishop. And now g5 by Magnus. Saying that maybe, maybe you should uh, have kept your king here. And gotten this pawn all the way to f4 uh, because now uh, at some point if you push f4 uh, you will also uh, ruin your nice pawn island and you will uh, you will then have to play with two pawn islands uh, so king e3 fabi makes room for the for the f4 pawn push we have king to h7 and now uh, fabi does go for f4 he could just wait and uh, and see what magnus comes up with but he prefers uh, some activity so f4 uh, we have G captures on F4, King captures, and King to G6 now by Magnus. We have H4, now preparing uh, something like H5, but now Magnus goes H5 himself. And he says, okay, if you try something like G5, uh, then I, I, I can just go, let's say, Rook to A4 check. You cannot move the King since this will be a weakness. Also, there will be Rook to G4 if you go to G3. So you'd have to block with your rook, but then I can just go, let's say, Rook A6, Rook to C6, Rook to C2, and... Uh, either force your bishop to move and let's say push the pawn uh, or or just cre create a, well some chances with, with a much more active rook than it was on a2 so fabi doesn't like this instead he captures on h5 but now king captures on h5 uh, and uh, the pawn is uh, well just attacked uh, and it, there is no there is no trick like if Carlson captures rook to rook to h3 is mate because you can always block with the bishop so fabi has to defend the pawn rook to h2 but now rook to a4 check by Magnus. King to e3. And now again, if you just trade here, yes, you can win a pawn. But it's uh, again uh, uh, an uh, endgame of opposite colored bishops, which uh, white can very easily draw. So it's not, uh, not very interesting. So Magnus instead finds a very sneaky idea. He goes king to g4. He wants to play king here, attack the rook, king here, attack the rook. And after the rook moves, just gobble up the pawn. So Fabi advances it to h5, but it's not... Uh, not much better. Magnus goes for king g3. Now rook has to move and now king to g2. And now the rook can no longer remain on the h file since uh, Carlson's rook uh, controls h4. We have rook back to d1 and only now rook to h4 going after this pawn. And uh, Carlson doesn't have to worry about any of his other pawns because his light square bishop nicely covers both of them. So Fabi goes rook d2 check, king to g3, and now rook to d8, uh, but now of course Magnus just uh, gobbles up the pawn. So rook captures on h5, and now again it's 2 to 1, but it's still, it's um, uh, bishops of opposite color, so it's very, very hard to push for advantage here. Rook to g8 with check. Uh, Fabi's down a pawn, but he makes Carlsen uh, take his king all the way to the to the h file, as you cannot approach the the white king, so you have to go all the way back. And now the rook cuts off the king from uh, re-entering the game. Uh, so king d2, and now uh, just uh, going going uh, after the pawn, so you can activate the bishop. And rook to f5 now. Magnus will now try and create a bridge, so his king can cross uh, across the g file. We have bishop to d4, uh, and now comes rook to f3. 
uh, and here we have bishop to e3. Uh, and now there is a there is a very interesting move here that uh, Magnus found. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find how would you continue the game here, as it's a very very strong move. Uh, well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that uh, there is a, a nasty discovery lurking in the position. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's f5. Uh, now the point is, uh, if at any other point you've played f5 without the rook being on g8, uh, why would just play e captures on f6, en passant, and uh, there is nothing more for, for black to hope for in this game, it would just be a draw. But here, white is unable to capture, and this means that black now has two passed pawns instead of one. Uh, which is of course twice as good at least uh, and you also have to deal with your rook being under attack you don't really gain anything by checking the king just runs away so here fabi goes after the bishop rook e8 uh, but now even f4 by magnus now saying if you capture here i'm just going to capture here and now i already have a rook behind your pass pawn i'm just going to push both of these guys to, to victory and there's not much you can do so instead, after f4, Fabi moves the bishop uh, and now comes bishop to c4. Again, a very strong move by Magnus, not uh, giving time Fabi to push his pass pawn because of rook d3 check picks up the bishop here. So king c1 uh, and now rook to d3, just the same. Bishop back to a7, getting out of harm's way, and now rook to c3 with check. We have king to b1 and now rook to c2 threatening even more nasty discoveries with bishop to d3 so fabi needs to prevent this he goes rook to c8 and now uh, if you go bishop to d3 now uh, it's not it's not going to work because here fabi just trades and after b captures on c2 check king c1 uh, it doesn't work uh, as uh, uh, well this bishop nicely uh, controls the f2 square so you cannot cross this and the king covers this so it's not really a problem uh, so this will not work uh, so Magnus finds king to g4 and now Fabi has to Fabi has to do something he goes rook to c6 uh, but now the game is completely lost uh, and uh, well it's very interesting why the game is completely lost so once again feel free to pause the video and find the winning move for Magnus while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting uh, either rook to a2, which just uh, uh, offers offers a trade here and allows uh, then allows for bishop to d3 check on the next move, or uh, even even better if you found Carlson's idea, uh, which is very shocking because here Carlson played bishop to d3, the move we already said doesn't work. However, uh, after you've played king to g4, it actually does work. Uh, and uh, here's why. So here Fabi of course went for the trade. It seems similar to the line we've already shown. However, after this check and king c1, now king to f5. And now the king is much closer here and the bishop must guard the pawn. So here Fabi defends it, but now comes f3. And now uh, the bishop will, will be overloaded. So bishop to a7, not allowing f2. Now king captures on e5. Uh, we have king to d2. Still, it's not very easy to cross, but king to f4. Uh, saying that, okay, if you capture my bishop, I just queen the pawn, so you don't even have to worry about that. So, bishop to e3, check by Fabi, and here Magnus just played king to g3, and it was in this position on move 64 uh, that Fabiano Corona resigned the game, and, uh, well, Magnus Carlsen also wins game two. Now, here you resign because whatever you play is just uh, game over. Uh, for example, if you, uh, we already mentioned, if you capture this guy, uh, then it's just c1 and you bring a queen into the game. Bishop has to capture it and now f2. Uh, there is no uh, stopping the pawn. If king here, just king here. And on the next move, you will, whatever white plays, you will queen the pawn. So that's one way to do it. Another way is, for example, if white tries to keep an eye on the f2 square, uh, it's the same idea. Just c1 queen, you force the bishop away from the defense of the f2 pawn and check. And the bishop nicely covers f1. So after the king moves, just f1 queen. And of course, it's game over. So yeah, of course, uh, Fabi knows this. And after king to g3, he resigned the game. Now, uh, there were a lot of things Fabi could have done better this game, but his, uh, his real and the, 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 the biggest mistake uh, actually happened uh, on move 4. In this position where Fabi missed to go for the Evans Gambit, he, he didn't go for b4 here. He played c3 instead, and then everything else just, uh, you know, uh, just happened. 
So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, in game three, uh, Fabi needed to, to to get two more wins uh, in this match to even to just force an Armageddon game. However, Magnus uh, uh, also had I, he had a winning position uh, on, on several uh, occasions, but uh, in the end, the game ended in a draw. But that was enough for Magnus to to claim win in in the first match. So Fabi needs to win match two, and then he also needs to come back uh, and win match three if he wants to go uh, go into the semifinals. Uh, but it's still not over. Magnus started with a 3-0 victory against Hikaru Nakamura and then Hikaru bounced back and then uh, won, won the match against Magnus. So anything is possible if Fabi uh, brings his A-game for the next match. So, uh, once again, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Kyle Myers, Mark Bennett, uh, Geoffrey Cook, uh, Tom Murphy, and René uh, Verstraten for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the finals of, of the Chessable Masters 2020, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.